I thank the organizers of this occasion for the honor and privilege given to me to speak on the subject for today. Yet, needless to say, I am keenly conscious of the responsibility that goes with the privilege, which I believe is to help in developing the understanding and thinking in each one of us to ensure the continuing effectiveness of the Red Cross Society in today's situation of all round deterioration in our own state, region, and globally. And from all that we are seeing, hearing, and experiencing of conflict situations going out of control on all continents, we know how important the effectiveness of the Red Cross Society and movement is for our world in peril. The official theme of the Red Cross Society globally is true humanity to peace. True humanity to peace. The theme declared for this unpredictable, increasingly dangerous year of 2024 is keeping humanity alive. Both these themes bring in humanity in its entirety, made up of all human beings, as the decisive factor in achieving peace and keeping humanity alive by stopping all that lead to kill killings. Cornelius Sommaruga was a Swiss diplomat and also president of the International Committee of the Red Cross for 12 years. He became the president of the International Association of Initiatives of Change, the organization with which I'm associated. I had the privilege of getting to know him and his thinking. He always talked about the urgent need of globalization of responsibility. Globalization of responsibility. He said, if globalization of responsibility is not understood and accepted by everyone today as normal thinking and living, exploitation of economic and political globalization would inevitably result in massive corruption, violence, and unmanageable killings worldwide. This was what burned in his thinking as a world leader. He died just about three months ago. He was a statesman who understood his times and acted and spoke out correctly. Here it will be appropriate for me to share what a Swiss friend of mine has written to me. I may add that he, a few years ago, was in Nagaland and took part in a Red Cross rally in Kohima. He wrote, Henry Dunant, the Red Cross founder, shouted in Italian, Tutti fratelli, tutti fratelli, which means all brothers. He said this again and again at the Battle of Solferino, Italy, as he was tending to injured soldiers, giving soldiers, giving solace to the dying with the help of the village women of the area. The village women of the area. And the faith women do the practical thing. Today, 
his school would be all brothers and sisters. After days, when the battle was over, he sat exhausted on a box in despair and horror of the loss of lives, sunk in silence. Suddenly, a clear voice within told him, Red Cross, the opposite of the national of his nation's flag. An organization of aid in wars, earthquakes, and other catastroph catastrophes grew out of this thought and found worldwide support. When the Red Cross as an organization was established and the International Geneva Convention came into being, Henry Dunant wanted more. He wanted an organization that would heal the hurts and hates, fears, greed, and want of power, regardless of the consequences on others. He was a man of strong faith and felt an even greater need for this kind of healing. He died feeling his call, had, his call and work was not completed. It's up to us to complete it today. That's the ending statement of this friend of ours. In our discussion of today's theme, keeping humanity alive, I believe we need to go to the deepest, deeper need Henry Junan saw before he died. He saw the need for the Red Cross movement to become a movement that would also, quote, heal the hurts and hates, fears, greed, and want of power at all costs, unquote not just one that addressed the sufferings of the human body and material destruction. Given the enormously increased threats and dangers today, due to the immense increase in populations of nations, climate change, depletion of resources, so on, the uncomfortable truth is that blaming, irresponsible use of excuses, etc., are now unaffordable luxuries we have to leave behind. What Dunant <clears throat> saw was that the international movement he founded dealt only with what is called disease process. Dealing with an epidemic of a disease is dealing with the disease process only. It, that, but that has to be done and done properly. But unless the origins of the disease are also dealt with thoroughly, like water, air, and soil pollution, on clean drains and garbage dumps, etc., etc., the epidemic will keep breaking out. This, you will agree, is a most important reality all societies with dreams and aspirations must understand and accept the changes required as normal thinking and living. Disease process, disease origins. I think international red cross as envisaged by Henry Dunant before he died, is reaching out to these roots, origins of diseases, of problems. Coming to our society today, as we have produced together, unless each one of us each one of us accepts our duty and responsibility to do whatever we do excellently and properly as we know all Christians, Hindus, Muslims, etc. should. Whatever our job and place of work may be, our society is collapsing 
into a black hole created by all of us. We tend to think that somebody is doing that damage and destruction more than us. But from heaven above, God is seeing that all of us, all of us, that are contributing to that black hole. Can we deny that the Naga struggle underground has destroyed itself and the people for whom it got started? I, I believe that this issue is uh, frustrating and overwhelming our society can come into this discussion. Because it's, it's about keeping humanity alive. Otherwise we will have death on a big scale, killing fields visiting us. Yes, now the struggle underground has, as we call it, has destroyed itself and the people for whom it got started. News coming every day is proof of that. And when is, and, and then the Naga government, Nagaland state government overground, too has destroyed itself and the people for whom it also came into being. And what is this common destructive destruction, underground and overground, doing to the church and other religions as all of us in our different ways, are certainly of the overground group of Nagaland. I believe that the church is caught in between and it is beginning to grapple with issues that are overwhelming our society. But if this common destructiveness in us will not be dealt with by all of us, the church could be, could be the one that destroys itself and the people. The reality is government by the ministers and MLAs has become, has become government for collecting enough money for the next election. Can we not say our politicians and bureaucrats, although they will be the first to admit they are not saints, have become helpless victims of the voters whose attitude is that they must solve the huge problems of development, but we the people can live as selfishly and irresponsibly as we like. I hope I'm making myself clear. It is easy to blame the politicians, the most easy thing to do, but we have to realize that unless each one of us become happy warriors for change, accepting the change and responsibility in ourselves, that will be adequate for the downsliding of our society. I believe we will see what means the most to us, our society, go down. This is a lesson from history. I shall end by making these few observations. All Nagas will be found to be passionate about doing what is right and good. But we do what is right our way, not God's way. And we force him to bless it. And that is enough the devil for the devil to create hell on earth right now. Two, what is wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing it. And what is right is right, even if no one is doing it. G.K. Chesterton. How do we bring this truth into our thinking and action as ordinary citizens. Finally, those who crusade not for God in themselves, 
but against the devil in others. Do not succeed in creating a better future. It is extremely dangerous to be more against the devil than for God. Aldous Huxley, the English writer. I believe that Red Cross could be the body, the organization, our society, all respect. And it could be the one organization made up of the most experienced people of our society who have gone through so much of life's work in, in their professions. I believe it can be the body that keeps setting the standard for our society. How do we find that good work out? But our society needs setting of standards, role models. I want to end by this recollection of a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he, he was a public leader. And when he was, uh, he, he, he was elected to a prestigious position in public affairs, that day in accepting his election, he said this, I am not a good man, if, but if you think I'm good, I'm very happy. And he said, I don't know how much, because I'm not a good man, I do not know how much good I can do. But I promise you, I will not do anything bad. This shrewd man's statement of what he would do I believe is there is a very important truth that if all of us can decide that we will not do anything that will make what is bad already worse at least we will create space and time and space to work out how we bring about a steady, steady transformation so that killings do not take over. Thank you very much. <laughs>